Oh, sorry. Let's see. You got to catch up with some chat. Oh, so you can catch me. I got you. My bad. I, pff, I misread that. So bump maps are kind of like remnant of the 90s before normal maps really came into being. Yeah. Yeah, that's. Uh, if you uh, if you click the slope bar, does it still reset the upper and lower ranges? I don't think so. Let's let's just add a color. Here, let's do pure red add distribution and slope. And choose this slope. So if you click the slope bar, does it still reset the upper and lower ranges like this, this bar right here? Mm. Let's see. So if I were to increase the upper range, lower range here, maybe blend that just a tab, go back to biome, click the slope bar. No, it seems to, I didn't actually, I didn't know that was an issue. Set the lower and the range bar. Oh, yeah, this range bar here, right? Oh, these the the lower oh the 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 um the blending the blending values. Oh, it does, doesn't it? It did. Well, I guess that bug is still there. All right, I'll have to let them know about that. <laughs> All right, I actually hadn't even, I didn't even know about that bug because I've usually, what I've done is I've set this to what I want and been happy with it. And I've moved on to something else. Let's see. Yeah, the splat maps are, are used in engines to define what the material should be. Yes, yeah, splat maps and weight maps. If I were to export this red color out as a weight map, it'll be a black and white image. Or if you want it to be a splat map to be in the RG or B channels, you can use this as a mask in Unreal or whatnot to know where the material that you created in Unreal or whatever program is going to be applied to. I just sculpted another killer mountain range last night, but giving this a try as hand sculpting, trying to get a good steep cliff in our mountainside is a pain. Yeah. Um, it's a little easier in this in some degree than, well, I'd say world crater two is a little bit more smooth, but yeah, there's, there's some more sculpting things, especially using paintbrushes coming to this. That'll make it a little bit more like uh, a little bit more like Z rush. Gotcha, gotcha. I want to do a temple on the side of the mountain cliff, but for it to look right, they have to be tall mountains. Gotcha, yeah. I can understand that. Scaling, right? Yeah, I just don't I just don't care for textures from programs like Roll Machine, World Creator, ETC. So when it comes to the texturing from programs like this. It's more so about, okay, so like, I don't care about, about, you know, the scaling of, of certain things. You know, I care about world creator and I don't know how world machine is, but world creator is way more sophisticated at where textures are applied to than, uh, than with unreal engine. So if you want to get something even like, even like this red texture here. If you want to apply this texture based off this slope, you know, I just won't care about that based off this slope and have it attached to, you know, steep slopes here, you have to run through a certain level of material calculations and each and every time that material is used just for a slope, it has to calculate that in as opposed to, you know, what, um, MOA development was saying about earlier, the advantages of using, splat maps or weight maps from world creator is you just use the 
the mask to derive where the textures that you create can be used. So it saves a lot of calculations, basically. It's just optimizing the program. Now, if you have a smart material or a um, like a landscape master material, I mean, that's what that is. It's texturing based off slope, texturing based off height, texturing based off concave or convex areas. But you have to run through all of those calculations. Well, Unreal, I can use slope or height blend. And if need to touch up stuff, I can paint it on in that area. Yeah, that's that's um so that's that's one thing that you can do so we've um, i'm hoping to set up a master material for this program to kind of be used so what you can do is you can still use um you can still use a master material for exactly what you're you're talking about sniper where you can still within unreal paint and sculpt uh edits for the for touch up areas that's perfectly reasonable but you can start off with a splat map you can use a splat map or weight map as your base and if you need to touch up an area you just say this touched up area is a master material that over you can do it so that one will override the other vice versa um, i've even had some companies will what they'll do is if they have a, an area that they want to touch up with in unreal is they'll touch up that area like, especially if they're sculpting, if they're re-sculpting something, all you have to do is just export the height map out of Unreal, re-import that back into a program like this, uh, run the procedural algorithms to apply the textures and re-import that back into Unreal. I know that's a tedious process and kind of dumb, but that's one way that they do it. But no, I get, I get, there's pros and cons to it. If you wanted to do that within Unreal to touch up that area, that makes perfect sense to do it on the fly or if you're just using unreal if you're just using world creator for the splat maps and stuff and you know that area needs to be touched up with the texture just come to world creator to do that touch up area and just resave the mask and its location in the content browser and unreal yeah there's some pros and cons to doing it certain ways and i i totally get your uh um get your point Let's add another material while you guys come in with any other questions. Let's see. How about ooh, let's see what let's see what their mud texture is. Aha, interesting. And let's get some green in there. Something eh, forest floor. Not that one. Not that one. Most of these, uh, it is forest floor, so it's not like grasslands. Granted, this one's not going to be, this kind of area is not much of a... Uh, mm, ground, ground, ground. Rock, 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 rock ground. Well, that's got some green in it. Hold on. All right. That's got some little bit of green in it. That one did too. I mean, these are these look pretty darn high quality. Whoops. Oh, let's try soil. Soil may actually have some more green options to it. Of course, we can always change the the color of, of these, no big deal. I like, I'll take this one. I like this one. We'll change the color. Right, color, color of the albedo, uh, depth, and normal. See, normal roughness and AO automatically fill in just because we've got it set up that way. Uh, UV scale. And let's change this tint to be... Something on the green side. Distribution. Let's do a fill and we shall do flow on it. But let's also do 
height range. So let's do a height range here. And then blend that up a little bit. And for flow, let's make the flow smooth us a little bit more. Let's put it underneath the lava, because lava is going to overtake the green. And we can increase some iterations with this guy. And also with uh, the whole thing, let's add another distribution and we'll do wherever it was. Oh no, let's do. Sorry, in fill. Let's do noise offset here. So I want to make it a little bit, a little bit rough. There we go. Angle three D. I like that person, that version. Okay. All right. Sorry. I'm back to, but basically making your auto material and functions, you're doing the same thing you are here. And in your material instance, you have sliders to tweak. So it's almost exactly the same as you're doing here. Yeah, no, I, I get that. That's perfectly understandable, but I think as far as what I meant before. So the, the most, the most, um, uh, adjustments that you're going to make in most terrains are going to be texturing based off slope, texturing based off height, and texturing based on concave or convex areas. One thing that most of them do not do, like Unreal, that I, I mean, that I personally don't see, is they don't do things like, you know, um, they can do things like noise offset, but they they don't have simulations to get flow. Um, they don't have certain things like... Um, Oh gosh, I'll just look and see different ways. So fill height, perlin noise, roughness, roughness, imagery, slope, sun direction, based on the sun direction, uh, different types of perlin noises. The thing that's one thing that's nice is that you I, I don't know if you can do without it being a super complex material instance, is things like you know, um, where is this edge? So being able to texture based off the edges of certain shapes or based off um water simulations um i mean i'm sure you can do that in unreal but you have to consider the amount of calculations that it takes for it to to do that you could add in some funky maths using a world position node etc but that's a headache yeah see it takes a lot of calculations to do the same thing that you're doing here yeah but once the material is made it's done and over with yeah, once you make the material, it's made. Yeah, you just do that once. That makes that's perfectly understandable. But I'm gonna give the splat mat a try if I can ever make anything worthwhile. My stuff never comes out what I need, the way I need. I guess it depends, um, sniper, what the outcome is. If you're creating something for a game, for example, there's always it, it's up to you know, as a you as an artist or technical artist to find a balance. I mean, how many draw calls or calculations do you want the game to have to do all the time based on a certain FPS and certain quality? If you're doing things for, you know, cinematography where you're going to render a scene out that's like 4K, you don't give a crap about performance. You just need it to render a scene for a movie or or a visual shot, then yeah, if you can do everything that you want to do in Unreal texture wise, then by all means do it because with cinema, you're going to make sure that the quality of the foreground stuff is maxed out anyway. Oh, thanks. Uh, thanks for uh, Emil Swan. Splat maps, are, splat maps are good for high and production. 
So everything is there for everyone. But for hobbyists like me, just making cinematics doesn't really save me much time. I mean, I can understand that. It, it, it's everyone's, you know, has different needs and different uh, uh, use cases. That's perfectly understandable. I mean, I don't use, uh, actually, I kind of like this for the cliff side. <laughs> I don't, I wouldn't use, uh, for me, I don't really use uh, World Creator for, um, let's see, for like export, exporting World Creator as its whole texture set for a background um, scene. Like, it would be great if you wanted to use World Creator to texture to export the entire terrain as a mesh for just a background mountain or background cliffs or just, you know, using it as a low quality um, background element so that your background elements aren't super, you know, dense or super, um, you know, uh, quality wise or performance wise sucking your computer down. Um, you can totally do that. Um, or you can just export the splat maps or you can just use world creator for just using it for height map sculpting. I mean, that's perfectly up to you on what your use case is. Uh, I think this will be the last texture. I Oh, no, I missed it. There we go. Mm, oh, and uh, shoot. Repetitive scaling has to be fixed in this too. So slope. Let's see where is this actually being used right here. So slope. Feather that out a little bit and then we'll use to the noise offset. Perfect. All right, then we can use, we can distort the edge. Actually, let's not do that. Let's add. We can roughen it up just a tad, just a smidge. Just a smidge. I don't know if I wanted to do that or not. Yeah, that's not bad. Mm, maybe we didn't make it that bad. Okay. We'll call it there for that. Let's see, Tyler, I posted in off topic in Discord and my hand sculpted mountain range from last night. Oh, I could take a look at it. Yeah, if you want the height map for anything, let me know. I have it uploaded to Google where I say my imported height maps. It's 8K and a lot taller than the image makes it. Yeah, I'll definitely check it out. Maybe I can look at it on, on stream sometime. See what, what you'd like. Uh... There we go. Let's do that. Um, let's see. What else did I miss? Per yeah, performance is a thing. Thanks for the stream. Um, oh, this is a really... This uh, terrain turned out to be... I know it's super repetitive right there, and it's kind of annoying, but... It is what it is right now. Let's turn on displacement for this. Ooh, too much.
Uh, is lava on? Yikes. Camera, come on. Yeah, we got some serious uh, camera issues. Uh, let's see. Let's just globally turn off because using displacement is really hefty right now. Yeah, there we go. We'll just turn off displacement for the time being. All right. Oops, sorry. Drop, drop. There's a link to the hype map in case anyone wants to look at it. Yeah, I'll definitely look at it. Thanks for sharing. Um, also, before, we're, before we end the stream, there's one other little piece that I wanted to talk about, which is, you know, using, which I, maybe I can do a dedicated stream on this too, and we'll work on creating like a kit bash of parts. I talked earlier about using World Creator for not, you know, super landscapey things. And one of that is being able to use world creator to create just rocks or boulders, or if you wanted to create a cliff, different series is series of cliffs and jagged rocks to use as meshes for, um, pasting to a, uh, you know, sphere or square or, or, or an object or whatnot, but being able to use different meshes to or pieces as a kit bash set, for using an unreal together as mesh elements and that that could be pretty interesting to do um you know if that's the kind of pipeline that you you wanted to take and you, like i said you don't have to use world creator for terrains at all maybe so well, we can definitely cover that for sure Yeah, is there a way in the program to get rid of the tiling? Not yet. They've they're hoping to in here to have um some some settings to remove the the tiling. So like this, yeah, this right here is blatantly obvious. So in World Creator 2, you can do that. You can remove tiling in World Creator 2. Um, but the thing about that is um in World Creator 2, for example, the removing of tiling doesn't export the same way. Like even if you export the entire terrain as a single texture for background use, the texture is still going to tile. <laughs> the materials are going to tile on the export. But even though that what you see in this engine, they don't tile because you've checked that checkbox. That check it's kind of annoying, but it's one of those um, things where it wasn't set up correct or fully uh, fletched out but for this program i'm hoping that what you see is what you get when you export here now what i usually do is 90 percent of the time when i use this particular program or when i use world creator 2 i don't use actual textures i use colors and that's what i would use if you're going to use textures with an unreal engine I wouldn't necessarily use, you know, these textures here within, you know, this program. I would use the textures within Unreal. What I would do in World Creator 2 or World Creator 2021 is when you add a material, just do it based on color. Just pick, get a color that's close to, you know, the medium color that you have that you're wanting to use. I want a, a, a green area. Or I wanted a, I want a brown or tan area. Just choose this this area and texture based on color, because then oh at the end of the day you're just going to use the splat map of that in Unreal. That's if you go that direction, or if you use this as a background uh, a, a background terrain, the colors of this are going to look perfectly fine without the need to use actual textures. That way you can learn how to use. It's easier to learn how to use. The program if you just texture based on colors first before you start applying um actual textures 
Uh, like for mine, when I pack my texture maps, I do them in substance and use a scrambler, which blends the texture and texture randomly rotated. Yeah, um, substance um, support is planned to come to world creator to well, to this world creator version so you'll see the substance sliders here whatever you whatever um you know texturing effects that you establish in substance designer just like you see in unreal all the sliders and and things you'll be able to see over here in the right um that's the goal but they're still negotiating how that's going to work out so um yeah that's that's an ultimate goal but still within both of these programs, I would highly recommend texturing based on just color and using the color or splat maps as your export to the engines instead of just the textures, unless you want to. Um, plus, it's faster. The, the texture sets, let me just hide all these real quick. The texture sets come with added performance draws for this program. If you use just colors, it's not going to hinder performance at all. Uh, Unreal has a couple of nodes for that texture bomb and more recently in 4.26 texture variation. That's true. Texture variation is pretty cool. I like that. Uh, slope. So like in this case, I'm just going to keep adding some colors here. And I'm just going to do the typical slope things. And just right clicking to duplicate. And texture based on concave. Convex step size is super small. So you can see, even with this, um, just learning how to use the displacement or the uh, distribution filters and, um, Let's add this again. Learning how to use the distribution filters and all the effects is really key with um, before you do textures. I mean, it's it it's what I would one hundred percent do before applying textures. See, now we're getting something completely different, and I'm just adding colors. Just adding colors. Let's put this one down here. And we'll do roughness. Yeah. And we're getting a whole and and you can just do all this stuff just by colors and it's it's a whole lot less. Uh, performance issues. I'm going to go ahead and save this real quick because this is kind of fun to mess around with. Uh, let's do, let's just call this one. And I can share this with you guys. Displacement version one because this is based off a of displacement map. All right. Uh, let's see. Plus, feel free to use the height map guys for whatever no restrictions. Like, oh, uh, Unreal has a couple nodes. Yeah, texture bomb. What would be nice is to be able to paint an area you want to add a filter to so it filters just that area. Yeah, that's coming. Um, in the biomes section, we'll be able to paint in exactly where we want. Um, painting biomes is one of the biggest things that's on their to-do list next. So to have no worries, it's coming. You can in World Creator 2, it's no doubt on the... Yeah, okay, I use World Creator 2. I just haven't figured it out yet. So in World Creator... Oh, well, MOA development's kind of being the support person here. <laughs> so in World Creator 2, in order to do that, you just go to the Areas tab, create an area, and then you paint, you paint using the heat 
the uh, the heat map mask. So just clear the mask, uh, set the mask to be however large you want, wherever you want on the terrain, and then you can just paint in with different brushes. You can also import your own brush or alpha brushes um, and paint in wherever you want. You will be able to do that here. Uh, it's just not here yet. Oh no, you don't worry. You can take the thunder all you want. I, I appreciate you you helping out um, in the chat. That's perfectly fine. Feel free to help. That's what we're here for. We're here to help each other out. So don't, don't apologize for <laughs> taking the thunder. You can do it all you want. Um, but yeah, that's, and, and those areas, uh, Sniper and World Creator 2, work the same for filters. So in addition to painting in an area where you want just a texture or color to be, um, you can that area would be able to um, do where you want specific filters to be too. And you can have different distribution rules for that area for both textures and filters. Same way here, you've got different, um, you got for filters and for materials, we have distribution rules right in this rule section. And as well as filters, we can select a filter and we have different distribution rules for filters. And we can apply those to different areas. Like I know this right here is just one biome. I've got other live streams and other videos that talk about how to create different biomes and how to customize biomes. So I won't go that into that here. But we'll be able to, just like in World Creator 2, paint in exactly. If I want to paint in on the side of this funky mess here and say, I just want this area to be where I want a certain texture or color or filter, then we can do that. Oh, you're welcome. No problem at all. Uh, let me. Let's see. I don't know. see where was this one this one was called displacement one i think this terrain was one that i started in the previous stream oh uh, yeah so like this this for example this was done all procedurally there wasn't any um i i did this one over a few different streams so you can see those striations i have on the top of this ridge line here are all everything in this is all procedural none of this is textures well i think actually yeah, none of this is textures. It's all just colors. So all of this, it's a series of colors to get all of these effects. So it looks like it's textured, but it's just colors. So if you made something like this and exported it as um, either a mesh or a height map to use for a terrain that's just in the distance, then you can do that. Or if I want to say, I want this color right here to be exported as a splat map so that I can apply the actual texture of that within Unreal, you can do that. So like this, this sort of splotchy color here, it's just a color. It's just a color in this case, and we can apply a texture to that uh, in Unreal just by using splat maps. And we'll cover these exports here, and we'll go over exporting in a different... Um, uh, stream all together, but you can, well, you can create your own presets, but see splat map, color map, normal map, height map are all defaults right now, but there's going to be a whole lot more added, uh, later for sure. Hope that makes sense. Yeah, thanks. All right, guys, um, we've been going for I said this was going to be a long, chill stream. We're almost almost into two hours. Um, and I, what I'll do is and for YouTube and, and for uh, Patreon users, I'm going to split this into different segments. So the first segment today, we talked about um, the height map or the displacement filter specifically and everything around that. Then we focused on the RD textures and everything around that. And maybe the third segment, I'll split it up into just this general chat and uh, discussion for uh, FAQ. Because it's it's nice to have a two-hour video split into a few different uh, pieces so you guys on uh, YouTube don't have to, uh, you know, scroll through two hours of footage to find the topic that you're wanting to, to know about. So 
yeah, thank you guys for for joining. Um, I'm going to be doing this again this same time next week or next Monday. I might start doing some evening streams for or particularly for uh, the people in, around this time zone, the Pacific Eastern Central Mountain time zone, or I don't know what the time zones are like for everyone else. But if I do like I used to stream on Wednesday mornings, but it's now Monday mornings, but maybe on Wednesday or Thursday nights, like evenings, like maybe uh, nine or 10 o'clock in the evening, I'll do some even more chill streams where we just design stuff and save Monday mornings for, you know, guided stuff like this, if that makes sense. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys next week.